Africa. My name is Quena Moloto, and we are here today as we continue with the DA's Rescue South Africa tour here in the City of Hope, the city that works, the DA-run city of Cape Town. DA Federal Leader John Stearnhazen has been traveling across South Africa, spreading the DA's rescue mission to the millions of hopeless South Africans. But I want to tell you, South Africa, there is hope and we can rescue South Africa and you don't need to look much further than right here in the DA-run Western Cape where almost 80% of net jobs created over the past five years were created by the DA. Uh, it is absolutely amazing the work that's being done here. We are winning the fight against load shedding and while crime is on the up in every other corner of South Africa here in the Western Cape, crime is on the decline and we can bring this DA difference to every corner of South Africa but we need you to vote and we need you to vote DA. Now I need you to stay tuned because we'll have various DA leaders including Alan Windy and DA Federal Leader John Stearnhazen addressing us today as well as an amazing lineup of artists and oh, I'm so excited for the launch of our Rescue South Africa anthem that will be performed by a very special guest, the one and only Lloyd Tele. So please like and share this broadcast with your friends and family at home. Don't let them miss out and keep up with the conversation using the hashtag Rescue South Africa and hashtag Rescue SA Tour. We want to hear from you. But now I'm joined by the man that's doing the most amazing work here in the Western Cape, the Premier himself, Alan Winnie. Alan, how does it feel to be here today as part of the Rescue South Africa Tour? Well, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get a word in edgeways here, but the Gears is just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, this tour is so important for us. We've got to rescue South Africa. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just look at it. We, we, we've still got people streaming in, but the Gears is amazing. And what a great uh, idea is to have this tour. And uh, come here to the Western Cape so that this, you're exactly right. This is where hope uh, begins. Yeah, where hope begins. Now, speaking about that, a lot of people call you the premier of jobs. In the last year alone, 300,000 jobs created here in the Western Cape. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you're achieving this? Yeah, we're sitting at 360,000 now. Uh, you said, uh, I think you said 70, it's 70, 78.9% 70, uh, 70, of all jobs in South Africa from one province in the last five years. And of course, we go from five years to five years, that's the term of office. And when nearly 80% of all jobs come out of one province, why, I mean, of course, that's, I'm super proud of that number. But that means eight provinces, 20% of jobs come out of eight provinces. Now, that's a scary number. What's the difference between those eight provinces and this province? There's one difference. It's called the DA. Yeah, the one difference is the DA difference. Now, Alan, let's, let's take a leap to safety. <laughs> what is it that you're doing to tackle crime here in the Western Cape? So we, we had a look at the analysis and we've been fighting for us to have control over SAPs. We, we want to actually control and make decisions on how policing deployment and how it is made. But uh, Becky Taylor said, not over my dead body. So we said, well, we'll show you. We'll show you what our plan is like. We put a safety plan together. We put LEAP officers, only 1,300 LEAP officers, but we pushed them into the places that had the highest murder rate. And of course, these are areas like the Cape Flats, like uh, in Kailicha, in Nyanga, in Mitchell's Plain, in uh, Atlantis. You know, these are the places that got those LEAP officers. And uh, now, after four years of LEAP officers deployed using data and technology and body cams and shot spot and all sorts of technology, exactly the opposite happens to what the SAPs achieve. SAPs keeps on double digit rising uh, murder rates across, across the country. And the only place in South Africa where murder rate is coming down is where our LEAP officers are deployed. And in some areas, uh, like Cryfontaine, down 45%. 
So it shows you that when you apply DA policy, when you apply technology and innovation and proper management, you can bring down crime. Now imagine you the voter give us the opportunity in South Africa to rescue our country and we will apply exactly the same rules across the whole of South Africa and let us deal a real sharp blow to the criminals of our country. So you need to vote and help us rescue South Africa and we can apply exactly the same things that we apply here to the whole country. Uh, I love that you mentioned innovation. There's a lot of innovative work that your government is doing, uh, free bus rides for job seekers, the mobile e-centers. Can you tell us about some of the innovations that you're most proud of here in the Western Cape? So, of course, I mean, there's a whole plethora of them. Have you got the whole night? Um, <laughs> but I think uh, the airlift program, where we, where we wanted to bring direct tourism into the region. Uh, right now, we started, we started about 12 years ago with four, four direct flights into Cape Town. This season, we had 215 direct flights into Cape Town per week, delivering thousands of international visitors. And it wasn't only in the season. We've just seen the numbers now coming out of January and February. And, uh, you know, for every 100 international visitors that come here, we have two, the formation of two more jobs. And that's one lever that is creating so many jobs. And whether it's that or the tech ecosystem with fintech, or whether it's like the smaller things that you say. And, and I mean, I, I think it's a smaller thing, but imagine how big it is for a young person getting a free, 12 actually, free bus rides to go to interviews and to get that first kind of job uh, opportunity. You don't have to repay your taxi fare at the end of your first week of salary or wage. You can actually use it for yourself because you, we've given the opportunity of a bus ride every day for 12 bus rides, basically. So it's those kind of removing red tape. I mean, that's just massive. And then, and then I think infrastructure investment is huge. You've got to build infrastructure. I look at the investment into infrastructure in our, in our government. We've just put over 30 billion now into the next phase of infrastructure investment. In the city of Cape Town you add another 42 billion now you're starting to look about you know, real infrastructure investment in actual fact Cape Town's infrastructure investment is double that of Johannesburg. Now we need to change that and the only way to change that is to rescue South Africa with your vote and of course here in the Western Cape keep uh, the Western Cape DA and we will keep being the hope and showing the way and I cannot wait to have other premiers in the team with me when we go and take on these challenges together to really change our country and you know that's what that's what politics is about that's what the election is about and that's the power of your vote your vote can bring change so come on vote for the DA and let's rescue South Africa now I must ask you South Africans at home one of the issues that's affecting everyone is load shedding I mean it's leading to job shedding it's leading to water shedding it is wrecking our economy what are you doing as the Western Cape government to tackle the issue of load shedding in the Western Cape. So just as we put the safety plan together, we put an energy plan together. We use 4,000 megawatts at peak. Our energy plan is for 5,700 megawatts. So we're even putting energy in for the future and for economic growth. Already people who live in the city of Cape Town uh, have no idea what load shedding is when it's load shedding level two around the country. Uh, when it's four in the other parts of the country, it's only two here. And it's going to very soon, they'll be able to mitigate three levels and then four levels. And so the same programs as in Cape Town are now being followed in George and in Mossel Bay and in Stellenbosch and in, and in Soldana Bay. And you see all of these programs coming out. We've also got other programs on small towns. We want the first small town in South Africa. That's Hetzekoa Municipality, Riversdale. They're going to be the first small town to be load shedding free. But in the, in the meantime, while we and these things aren't quick fixes, we're also doing other projects like uh, we've given municipalities money now to put, uh, to put generators at your sewage pumps and your water pumps. So when the power goes out, the water carries on flowing. I mean, that's really critical. Or we've got right down to energy packs. It's a solar panel, three lights, a battery pack, so that uh, elderly people can keep the lights on when the power goes off or out at our gender-based uh, uh, violence shelters. And now we're rolling up those same packs to our lower quintile uh, schools so that our learners in primary school and in high school can actually have a lighting system so that they can carry on studying or just reading because we have to keep ahead of the curve on reading with meaning. Yeah, and these are the smaller things that are really making a difference in ordinary lives of our citizens.
That's about hope and that's about the future. Yeah. The Western Cape's keeping the lights on and keeping the hope alive. Now, 99%, I was, I was amazed when I heard this, that 99% of residents in the Western Cape have access to either piped water or tap water. But people that are against the DA consistently say the DA is anti-poor. What would your message be to them? Oh, that's absolutely wrong. I mean, if I look at our provincial budget, 75% of our budget goes to lesser advantaged citizens. So we don't build, you know, schools in affluent leafy suburbs. I've just visited a school in Luwandle. Uh, you know, we go to we go to Mitchell's Plain and Kailicha. We go to the small villages and towns, and that's where we invest in clinics and hospitals and housing. I mean, we don't build housing uh, for people in Constantia. We build housing uh, like our better living model at the back of uh, Pinelands and you have a look at opportunity for thousands of citizens uh, for homes, schools, really changing the way people live. Um, and it's also about innovation because it's about having solar power and solar uh, geysers. It's about using low power voltage lighting systems. It's about also having a policy that says these houses only don't just go uh, to the next person on the list. We favor certain people. We favor backyarders. We favor agri-workers. We favor elderly and those with disabilities. They get a good chunk of that percentage of that policy. And that really makes a difference. I love going to the handing over of houses. And another thing, hand over a house, the key to a house, and give the title deed at the same time. Oh, 100%. And I've always said, you know, when you give someone a roof over their head, an asset to own, you're giving them dignity, and there's nothing more important than that. My, my last question to you, Alan, and then I'm going to let you go, because it really is a vibe here. I think we both want to get involved in it. What would your final message be to the voters here in the Western Cape? Why is it so important to keep the Western Cape blue? So I think, first of all, I think voters in the Western Cape can feel the difference. They know it. But it gets reinforced when visitors come from other parts of the world and other provinces. They go like, wow, this place is amazing. So remember how we got here. We got here by changing our vote. Uh, and we did that in 2009. In 2009, this province was rescued from the ANC. Now our chance is to keep a DA. So please vote DA to keep the Western Cape DA. But remember, you got three votes. So the first vote, keep the Western Cape DA. Let's keep more. You know, we've, we've got we're, a lot to do still. We want to do more. The second vote and the third vote are your province to national and your national vote. And that's a critical vote in this province because we must play our part in rescuing South Africa. So every single vote in this province, keep the Western Cape DA and let, let's lend, lend our votes to the national uh, uh, votes so that we rescue South Africa. Well, thank you so much, Alan. As we said, they're keeping the lights on here in the Western Cape and keeping the hope alive. Now, please, can everybody stay tuned? We've got an absolute amazing lineup ahead of artists speeches it is an absolute vibe here so don't go anywhere we will be right back for the first time in 30 years the ANC is set to lose its majority Opposition parties have united as the multi-party charter for South Africa. A strong democratic alliance with a proven track record can anchor a new government that serves the people. But a new government that works is only possible if you vote for it. Let's unite and rescue South Africa. Vote DA. En zwart en wit. Ik moet van jullie zijn om te zitten, alsjeblieft. Sorry, ik is excited. Allemaal seated. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you guys to the rescue tour in Cape Town tonight. Can I say it again? I want to welcome you to the rescue tour in Cape Town. Ik wil beginnen bij de belangrijke mensen hier voor. Hallo, jullie. And then the VIPs, as Yella. Hello, Yella. Hello, Yella. Yeah. Yaku Lonka Makwatas, XA, Yella's VIPs. 
die meie van die kaap kan maar kwaad as ek sê, jylle is die VIP's. Ek kies alweer enemies vroeg, ek kies enemies vroeg. Ladies and gentlemen, this rescue tour is the tour of John Steenhuizen. And I don't have to tell you why. Die man is op een oorlogspad. En jylle ook. So the tour van the rescue van naand is John Steenhuizen and and it's an absolute honor and pleasure to host you guys tonight in the beautiful Cape Town City Hall. As vol van naand en dat my lekker voel 'n paar jaar trouw te was ek hier tussie ses mense. So thank you guys for having me relive my dream. Are you guys ready to have a good time tonight? Oh yes, jy kan nie die kapers en jy is nie lekker nie, want een van die kapers en mouse iconic slogans is Waar is dit lekker? And you better be lekker, you better be lekker. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our first musical performance for the night. As hierdie twee manne hier, ja, hulle is a band, maar hulle is net twee. Hoe hulle het gaan doen? We're gonna find out. Please make some noise and welcome Tenna and Mbongadi! Awesome to be here. Thank you so much for having us. We hail from Durban. My name is Tanner Ware, and this is Zimbongani Magai. We're gonna play you some proudly South African stuff, some groovy stuff. Feel free to get up and dance.
Ladies, number for you. Of a town, Zorada. Hope you guys enjoying yourselves. And I get a man, yeah. Away to. Hey, God bless. We really have faith in the DA and what they're doing. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you so much. This next song is called Dogu Landela. This chorus was written by a man in the Eastern Cape, Bongaziwe Mabandla, proudly South African. It means I will follow you all my days. We are here because we are following a good cause, right? We're following each other into a bright future, right? We will have victory. Amen.
Thank you, Captain. We'll see you again later. Enjoy the rest of your evening. God bless. Say Yola. Who can it? Was it lekker? How beautiful it is to stand here in our historic city hall in the one province that is showing what our country is capable of. In the words of President Ramaphosa, at least we have one city that works. At least we have one province that works. Little did he know at the time that he was giving us our campaign slogan. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Because it's true, the Western Cape works. And now, in just five weeks, we have a chance to do that in the rest of South Africa too. To rescue South Africa and put our country on the path to prosperity. This truly is the most exciting campaign to be a part of. We're all making history, you're all making history, and I'm sure you can all feel it. I know I can feel it. You know our team in Cape Town, we have a mantra that we repeat every single day. It's very simple, and it goes like this. We refuse to accept that failure and decline will be a part of South Africa's story forever. We see all of these failures around us in South Africa. Broken municipalities, broken state-owned enterprises, broken government departments, broken infrastructure, broken police, Right here, just over the road from this beautiful building, we have a government department, the Department of Public Works, that for two years hasn't been able to get its act together to get a court order to clean up the castle. Just further than that, we have the station deck run by Prasa, falling apart, collapsing in front of us. Can't get its act together to clean up that building. If it doesn't clean it up soon, we're going to go and get a court order to knock that building down. Just like we're going to knock down this derelict, broken government on the 29th of May. We see all of these things around us in our country. But you know what makes me sad? We see how many South Africans in our country have started to accept that this is South Africa's future. But that is wrong. We in the DA are on a mission to prove just how wrong that is. That's why we're delivering better services to more people than anywhere else in South Africa. That's why we're investing more in basic infrastructure than any other city in South Africa, and a lot more. That's why we're doing more to end load shedding than any other city in South Africa. That's why we're doing more to keep our residents safer than any other city in South Africa. That's why we're doing more to attract investment to our city, more than any other city in South Africa. And most importantly, that's why we are creating far, far more jobs than any other city in South Africa. I saw this week an amazing success story that I want to tell you about that shows how much more safety leads to more jobs and how we are doing both. In Mitchell's Plain Town Center, Vasi Mensah from Mitchell's Plain. In Mitchell's Plain Town Center, last September we invested 14 dedicated law enforcement officers in the town center. And we're working with the local businesses there. We've got 75 CCTV cameras. 
with a dedicated control room watching the town center always. When I went there this week, businesses told me that while they still have to deal with petty crime, serious crimes that used to be common on the town center are now rare in the town center. Shoppers. The shoppers are feeling safer. Businesses are feeling confident to open up and invest. And what does this mean for jobs? Three years ago, they told me business occupancy in the town center was less than 20%. That means 80% of stores and businesses were vacant. And jobs and investment had left. Now, because of our safety investments, businesses are flocking in to Mitchell's Plain. Occupancy is now over 80% and still growing. And that means more and more jobs are be cre being created right there in Mitchell's Plain. This is the progress we are making. Despite all of South Africa's difficult challenges, all of the things going wrong in our country, we are making progress despite those things. But, can you do it? Some people want to come and threaten this progress we are making. They obviously want the Western Cape to be more like other provinces where everything is broken. John was right when he warned us last week in Paul about small parties who want to smuggle the ANC in through the back door. Just today, just today, one of those parties, a light green party called the PA, very good friends with the dark green party called the ANC, they told us clearly and plainly in their own language, this is not us saying it, this is them saying it and today, that they don't care about rescuing South Africa, they want to ruin the Western Cape. They've told us in their own words that they will, not might, not maybe, not can, they will work with the ANC after the election to unseat the DA. Just think about that for a minute. Just think about that for a second. Look across our beautiful country. In the Eastern Cape, babies are dying in a collapsing provincial health care system. In Gauteng, Mental health care patients and the elderly are, are dying in the care and at the hands of the state. In Gauteng, there is no water for weeks. We have state capture. We have load shedding. We have the collapse of policing. And you see all of that around you, and this party thinks to itself, no, no, instead of rescuing South Africa from all of that, what we must go and do is ruin the Western Cape. Did Mark Mosni Sydney? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense unless, of course, you've always been working with the ANC. <laughs> unless, of course, you're doing their bidding and helping them to stay in government, then it makes perfect sense. So let's pause and go back to the beginning. Today, the leader of that party bragged about his house in Cape Town that's worth millions. It would have been worth much less in, in Joburg. But he's bragging on his uh, press conference about how he's worth his, his house is worth so many millions. Where does the money come from? A decade ago, well, we, we actually know where the money came from. Because a decade ago, he was lucky enough, lucky enough, I say in inverted commas, to win one of the biggest BEE enrichment lotteries in the history of BEE. When he and a bunch of his buddies were gifted hundreds of millions of rands in the Goldfields Mining Empowerment Deal. What did he do in return? Nothing. What value did he add? Nothing. He brought zero to the table. He's never owned a mining company. He's never worked a day in a mine. But all of a sudden, he's a major shareholder of one of the country's biggest mining BEE deals. This was a BEE corrupt feeding frenzy for Gayton and his friends. He was working with the, ANC, with the ANC with their corrupt BEE laws then, 
and he's working with the ANC today. He loved the ANC then, he loves the ANC today. You may have seen on some PA election posters up around the city and around the province that now he wants to end race-based legislation like BEE. These are one of the pledges that he's made. Interesting, now he wants to end it, but only after he first got rich on it. If we look at that deal, there was another big beneficiary. In fact, the only other big beneficiary in that deal was not anyone representing the workers. It wasn't a collection of actual mine workers who could have benefited from that deal. The biggest other beneficiary was none other than the former ANC speaker and chairperson of the ANC, Baleka Mbete. Friends, he was working with the ANC then, he's working with the ANC still now. Let's focus on his buddies for a minute, the other people that benefited, the smaller beneficiaries in that deal. They were the two big ones, but there was a whole lot of other smaller fish. One of them was a man who was wanted for armed robbery in Lesotho. The Lesotho government was actually trying to extradite him back to that country so that they could uh, prosecute him. He also faced a host of charges, including murder and the illegal possession of a large stockpile of weapons. Gayton gave this guy, a Mr. Danny Smith, 60 million rand. Six zero. Another one of the smaller beneficiaries was Jacob Zuma's lawyer. He got 60 million. Another one was a criminal wanted for petty crime. He got 30 million. There was another 30 million here, 7 million there, 3 million for you, 3 million for you. All of his friends and cronies got something. And you know, when a journalist asked him about this, he just said, and I'm quoting, you can't blame me for all of this. That's how the law is written. But now he says to his voters or any, and on his posters that these laws are wrong and he wants to end them. Funny how he only came around to this view after first scoring hundreds of millions from those very same corrupt schemes. I tell you this story, friends, as a warning to us all. South Africa has been brought to its knees by this ANC government and the way that it manipulates laws and processes to enrich its friends and its cadres and its cronies. But don't be fooled by the ANC's relative weakness here in this province because they have many ways to smuggle themselves back in and stick their hands back in the cookie jar. One of those ways is through their proxy parties like the PA who have not only benefited from the looting before, partnered with the ANC every chance they've got, whether it's in Bito or in Neisner or in Tiavatoskloof or in Johannesburg or PE, every chance they've got, they've chosen to work with the ANC and who now want to extend that looting here. And today they have told us straight that they will help bring the ANC back here given the chance. So that, friends, is the real threat we face. It is the real threat to the progress that we have made in this province together. The progress that you have made, that you have worked for and fought for over the last decade. Someone wants to come and undo it all and break it all. Are we going to let that happen? That is why we have to fight to keep those crooks out of the Western Cape. We have come too far to simply give up the Western Cape back to the ANC and their proxy parties like the PA. So let's decide together tonight that the PANC will never come here and break what we have built. The PANC will not pass, begin. They will not take our province the, the, all that we have built, all the jobs that we've delivered, take our progress and hand it over to the ANC. We will not let that happen. If we want to really rescue South Africa, if we want to do for South Africa what we are already doing for Cape Town, what we are already doing for the Western Cape, 
Our first job in this election, friends, is to shut the door here on those who want to come in and loot. Only then, only then will we be able to turn this city of hope and this province of hope into a South Africa of hope and realize the promise that we have been working together towards as a party for more than 20 years to rescue South Africa from the clutches of a failing, dying government and to put our country back on the pathway of prosperity. That is something worth fighting for. And so I can't wait to join you in our branches, in our wards, with our candidates, with our Premier. I can't wait to join you every day for the next six weeks to make sure that we shut the door on the looters and we make sure that we carry on building success in the Western Cape. Thank you. Thank you. Was het lekker? Was het in het? Baie, baie dankjes. Baie lekker om in het te wees. Colleagues and fellow South Africans, today we stand at a crossroads, facing a reality that none of us can afford to further ignore. For three long decades, 30 years, we have watched as our dreams for this nation have been overshadowed by the darkness called corruption, incompetence and neglect. The aansie het die vertrouwe van die mense verraai. Ons staatsinstellings wat eens ons trots was, is uitgehaal dier hebsig en eie belang en die gevolge word in elke hoekie van ons land gevoel. Die skande van die aansie klat op ons goeie land. Kruim stalks our streets, stealing our sense of security. Our children, who are all of our futures, are denied the basic right to a quality education, except in the Western Cape, where everything still works. Water, the lifeblood of our nation, runs dry in our taps. And our ports, once the gateway to prosperity, lie dormant, crippled again by ANC neglect. But in the midst of this darkness, there shines a light. To be correct, there shines a blue beacon of hope that refuses to be extinguished and we continue to shine that hope. In 2009, the people of the Western Cape made a choice, a baie baie weise kese as ons aan kyk. They chose a government that promised to put their needs above politics, to prioritize service over self-interest. In 2009, voters voted to rescue the Western Cape. And the quo was the South Verde. And what, what did they get in return for that wise choice? They got a province that works for all of them. They got a government that delivers for everyone. They got a future that is bright with promise in this province. But today, stand the West Cape as a bewijs van wat moeilijk is wanneer leiders luister naar die mensen wat hulle moet dien. Ons provincie is die best bestuurde provincie in die land. A blank voorbeeld van wat bereik kan word wanneer bestuur skoon en verantwoordbaar is. Over the past five years, our province, this DA-led province, was, has been responsible for creating 80% of all the jobs in South Africa. This means that four out of every five people in this province, in this province, have ensured that they have a job. But the DA and the DA Western Cape is not just about numbers and statistics. We are a caring party. It's about our people, Abantu Bonke, as we campaigned in 2009. It's about the single mother from Guguletu, or from Liuhamka if you are in the central Karoo, who finds a job to support her family. It's about a young boy from Kranzoek or from Bitterfontein if you're in the West Coast who dares to dream of a better future. It's about all of us in the Western Cape. 
It's about coming together to build not just a better province, but to build a nation that we all can be proud of. So my mere South Africaners, terwijl ons op die vooraand van die meest belangrijkste verkiezing staan sedert 1994, laat ons die kiese onthou wat 44 dagen van vandaag af voor ons leer. Ons kan kies om die pad van achteruitgang te blijven op, of ons kan een andere toekomst kies, een blauwe toekomst, een toekomst geleid door die dia op een nationale vlak, net zodat so ons in die weeskaap doen. Een toekomst waar elke kind, ongeacht al omstandigheden van geboorte, een geleentheid het om te leren. Waar elke sin, gesin toegang zal het tot schoon water, maar waar elke burger veilig kan voel in hulle eie huise. And this is what it means when we say rescue South Africa. And on the 29th of May, people need to vote DA to rescue South Africa. But in this province, the only DA governed province, we need to ensure that we get maximum votes out to continue our extraordinary journey of changing people's lives in the Western Cape. We have a clear plan and want to continue on that path of extraordinary delivery. And what is that plan? You will vote to ensure that we create 800,000 new jobs. You will ensure that we will fight crime in this province with 1,300 law enforcement officers. We are expanding this program to our rural areas and we have K-9 units. You will ensure with your vote that we cut load shedding by four stages in this DA governed province. <clears throat> And you will ensure that we push for control of policing, because clearly the ANC cannot. You will ensure that transport works effectively and that our ports function at the capacity which they are supposed to be. You will, you, your vote will ensure that we build more schools, even faster than we are currently doing, to deliver quality education for all in the Western Cape. And to continue on our journey to deliver world-class health care. But above all, and this is what makes our province and this daily provincial government and all of our municipalities so unique, we are in a clean, innovative government that delivers for all of you after the 29th of May. So the choice is quite simple, fellow South Africans. The DA has proven that we have rescued the Western Cape. It's now up to all of us to vote on the 29th of May to rescue South Africa. And like we say in the Western Cape, ons is al klaar in het. Op die 29 May, we are op het. En stem die ja, en kom eens die aan, sê uit. Baie dankie. Let's keep it going for Minister Tessia Simmons, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. My program say I can make you like a for a minute. I'm going to make it quick. I'm here to do a job and I will get fire for you because I need this money for child support. So I'm going to make this quick. Where's my my new bestie, uh, JP? JP? Yeah. So now you. I thought we brass and now you're ignoring me, huh, JP? Huh, JP? Now you're ignoring me. I thought we brass and now you're ignoring me. As for baiters and all, JP. So can you have a friend? So can you have a friend? Bongi. It's good to see you, sir. I get a minute, I will finish up. Um. Ik heb die meier van George gezien, uh, meier Leon, uh, welkom. Ik was hier voor jou. <laughs> ik zei hem maar net, ik heb vroeger gekomen in die week. Ik heb vroeger gekomen. Um, ik weet niet, meneer Mayo, kan je zelf een trip gevallen wat ik gevallen heb? Die ding is die, Cape Town is zo so lekker, meier Jordan. Die kaap is daar uit om ons wat die van hier is te trap. Wie van jullie wat nou is, is die van die kaapie. Oké, okay. nou stay with me, because van jullie is witnesses. Die kaap het die ding wat hy wil jou infect en hy wil jou trap, as jy nie van die heer sien. When you in Cape Town, you feel the need to pass in by Cape Town. Daar moet jy ook, daar moet jy ook Cape Town nie in praat. Now a few years back, toe val ek in die trap van Engels praat in die kaap. Weet, as jy die man wat nie sien is sien. Of in die Spanel, ETV. I don't know the name, I just assume, I assume. Indian name I got. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what the real name is. <laughs> now take an Indian friend. Barakha Mr. Fansal Danabai. 
I'm very happy to be here. Can I make my story clear, ma? The car had the trip. So a few years back, Mr. Mayer, to fall back on the trip, to go for the two years on the big wheel too. I went to the big wheel for the second time. I can now say second time because my scandal was for the word second time because the high tide to actually can say second time. Nie. So come by the big wheel and he oh by the egg for for me. Uh, he said, "Hey, you look excited, eh? It's your first time here." And as my tweede keer en ik voel, ik ga voor die man een stukje Engels geven. You know why? Because I'm in Cape Town. I might be from the Karoo, maar onder die patte kop is hier brein. Ah nee, moet niet. Don't don't clap. That day the brain did not brain. That day the brain didn't brain so lekker. So he asked me, he said, "Look, excited. It's your first time here." And normally, when you're about to get in a position of confidence, that would be lekker staan. And I stand lekker. My memory is here for no. It is my two the time. Now let me tell you how you know you're confusing someone. Ne? In, 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 in particular, our African brothers and sisters. When you confuse an African brother or sister, they will let it known by saying the following: Yo. When I said two the time, you went yo. Now here's what happened yesterday, my dear. I guess you're by the English face because I'm pretty clear. Yesterday, you were like the Capetonian slang, probier. JP, I wanted to try the slang because I will unpass. The car gives you that vibe when you hear you wanna you wanna fit in. To talk by family, not feel by family, not by our fans and followers. Can carry me to explain. By like any tafel, sir. And this time, okay, okay, relax, relax. On Sunday, let's see. And this time is by a nice bit. It's an it's an on the ear. And two words for my dear Mark, ne? And we all know the Cape Townian slang is something very unique. But as I can't get. And say it's give me the combination. And yes, what confused me because I couldn't see where they were talking. I get clear my some wussas are crying with my sisters. To scare the auntie from my room, by saying, "My Leon van Wijk, how much your tea got now come? I wait not half for your cook water." Hey! To say far, no, thank you. I'm in a relationship. Just bring the tea without the cook water. I get a frow by the eyes. I can't see if I suck at them any. So I was upset to sit in my eight. So I can't move on the Cape Town trip. I'm gonna stay true to me. I can bray. I can bray. So dames en heren, met dit gezegd, die volgende lekker mens wat ik verwacht te gaan brengen. Zie me eens maar. Ik is, ik is, ik ga, ik ga het authentiek. I can bray. I can move on the Cape Town kus. Het werkt niet voor mij niet. Het werkt niet. Die volgende lekker mens wat ik verwacht te brengen is bekend. For the win, or for the for the cabs of win, and he contributes to the win. And on another na nieren toen dag mij to hoe sterker hij win, hoe sterker hij win, hoe sterker hij win, hey, hey, hoe sterker hij win, hey, hoe sterker hij. And he dia ask out my five hundred days and I'm for the song. Dames en heren, maak een raas en voor welkom naar die verwacht. Jouw premier candidate, Ellen Wendy. Maar hou gewoon vast, voor hij opkom, ga ik, ga ik daar iemand zijn beroep over vat. Voor hij opkom, ga ik ons kijken naar die scherm, zo ik schakel over atelier toe. Maar dat is kapot, is hij kan niet. Moses en Kaapstad. Fijn, dank je. Hold it! Hold it! I say, good evening, dames and gentlemen. Morweni, Wamkile Kile. Good evening. What a vibe in this city hall. Give yourselves a round of applause. Woo! It looks amazing. Do you know that so many people are saying that 2024 is our 1994? Mavichivat, 1994 was a serious 
point in our history. It was a time in our history where so many people in our country got the opportunity to vote for the very first time. It was in a at a time in our country where we became that rainbow nation where we were full of hope. But now, 30 years later, this is not our 1994. This is much more important. This year, we all get the opportunity in this beautiful country of ours called South Africa, we get the opportunity to bring about change and to rescue South Africa. We need to rescue South Africa and we actually need to rescue democracy in our country. Your vote, your vote here, your vote in the Western Cape and your vote in South Africa has the power to make that change. You know that every single vote counts. Every vote. You just have to, in this very province, go to the town of Beto. In the last election, the Democratic Alliance won, lost by 21 votes. 21 people decided that their vote didn't count. And you know what's happened today because we did not have a majority in that town? The coalition of corruption has taken over in that town, just like they've done in the town of Neisner. Go to the town of Neisner right now, and the water, when it is delivered, sometimes it's brown, mostly there's nothing if you live in Hornley. In other parts of the town, they have bodies in the water for two weeks before they even find out about it. And the person, unfortunately, who drowned in that water had already decomposed so badly that his arm came away from his body when they tried to remove him from the water. And in that town, that government thinks that that is right to give their citizens that kind of service. Cease, exactly. That is totally unacceptable. And whether the rubbish is piling up high or the sewerage runs through the streets, that's the kind of management you get there when the coalition of corruption grabs hold of your vote. Don't let that happen in the Western Cape. Every single vote counts, and in this province, we need to make sure that we keep it blue. Ons kan dit blow. Daar say. And in South Africa, we have to make sure that every single vote comes out for the Democratic Alliance so that we can bring that change and kick out the ANC. And you know what we've been doing in this province since we kicked out the ANC in 2009 is we've been building the hope for South Africa. So if you think about safety and you think about murder, it wasn't long ago that we were noticed as the murder capital of our country, but a safety plan kicked in. And unlike SAPs and the police, where they deploy police officers all over the place, except where it counts, where murder is high, where crime is high, where the gangsters rule rife, but not here, because in our partnership with the city of Cape Town and our LEAP officers and the safety plan, we deploy those LEAP officers where crime is the worst. And guess what happens? The murder rate comes down. And there is only one place in South Africa where murder is coming down, and that is where our blue plan, in those crime hotspots, where those LEAP officers are deployed, the murder rate comes down and everywhere else it goes up. That's the difference where the DA governs. In energy, in this very city, this is the only place in South Africa that mitigates already two levels of load shedding. <laughs> South Africa, when you are at level two load shedding, people in Cape Town do not know about it. When you're at level four, they're only at level two. And the plan at the moment that is kicking into gear is the same thing is going to be happening in George and in Mossel Bay and in Stellenbosch and in Soldana. 
In these municipalities across this province, 5,700 megawatts is in the plan, 2,000 megawatts in the pipeline, and we will be mitigating level by level of load shedding until this province is load shedding free. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, Vitivat, nothing stops a bullet like a job. Nothing puts food on your table like a job. And nothing gives you dignity like a job. And in this province, in this province, that's where those changes happen. I was looking at the data and statistics between what was known as the engine room of our economy in South Africa a few years ago, Gauteng. It is no longer so. This is the engine room for jobs in South Africa. Since the end of the pandemic, here we have 10% more jobs now since the end of the pandemic, and in Gauteng, they have 1% less jobs since at the end of the pandemic. Since we took over power and we kicked the ANC out in this province, 700,000 new jobs in this province, and in Gauteng, which was the engine room, they only managed 300,000 jobs. This is where you get an opportunity. This is where you come for health care. This is where you come for education. This is where you come for a job. Why? Van der Sblowied. Why? Because this is where the Democratic Alliance is in power. Do you know the most amazing statistic of all? In the last five years, in this province, this province and our municipalities and the businesses here are responsible for 78.9% of all jobs in South Africa. 78.9% of all jobs in South Africa come from this province in the last five years. 20% from all eight other provinces. And that's the real indictment. The ANC provinces could not muster 20% of South Africa's jobs, all of them put together. And 80% just under comes from this province. And so there's a very serious choice that is going to be made on the 29th of May. A baie, baie belangrike besluit op die 29ste mei. Nummer 1, die Westkaap werk. The Western Cape works. And so, therefore in this province, we are going to go out and vote. Every one of us, every one of those votes that count, we are going to go out and vote and we are going to make sure that we keep the Western Cape DA. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play our part in this province to rescue South Africa. So we are going to go out in this province and we are going to vote en masse for national in this province. Ons gaan ons kan bring vir die nationale stem in hierdie provincie, want ons gaan Suid-Afrika red hier van die Westkaap af. Onthou, hou dit blauw! Hou dit! Baie, baie dankie! Bye, thank you, Premier Candidate Alan Windy. Um, dames and heren, I can no artists na fore bring, but I really do wish in my heart that the O van die Big Wheel moes nou hier gewees het. Because I'm going to introduce this guy in English. And ek wens hy was nou hier om die volgende te hoor. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my utmost pleasure. Hey! It is my distinct honor. Hey! I don't know distinct, but it sounds right. To welcome the next artist to the stage, which isn't just any artist. 
He's an artist in particular, Mr. JP, who wrote the official DA campaign song. Hier die man het die wapen geskryf wat jylle gaan dra tot verkiesdag toe. Daar is de Afrikaans van bonus. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular artist wrote the national campaign song, a song with an emotional connection to the rescue mission. Which is the reason why you guys are sitting here tonight for the rescue mission. So I want you to make some noise and show some love to our distinct Yes, artists tonight. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Lloyd Chelly. From Sansi to we gotta rescue South Africa. Come on, sing it with me.
die viva! Pambili die pambili! Ik kan er niks lekker denken als om vanavond hier in die kaap te wees. Want waar is dit lekker? Ja, het is lekker hier in die kaap, want die kaap is blauw. No matter what anybody tells you, Democrats, there's only one reason why the Western Cape works. There's only one reason why it operates better than the rest of South Africa. And the only reason why it is fixed while the rest of South Africa is broken because the people of the Western Cape have united behind the Democratic Alliance. But you can see the men's in the West Cape is slim, ne? But they know it. They know that eight out of the ten jobs in the last um, five years have come from one province and one province only. What province is that? Oh, I can't hear you. And they know that because this province is led by the DA. The people of the Western Cape know that employment is about to dip below 20%, while it's above 40% in the rest of the province. And they know this because this province is led by the DA. The people of the Western Cape know that the LEAP program has taken 27,000 criminals off our streets, while Cyril Ramaphosa has put 16,000 criminals back on the street, and they know that because this province is run by the DA. They know that the biggest beneficiaries of good, clean, accountable government are the poor and vulnerable. They know that this province has the highest access to basic services, including water, sanitation, and clean drinking water. And they know that because it is led by the DA. So when we talk about the DA difference, that is what the DA difference is. And I'm so proud of you, and I'm so proud of our government here in the Western Cape, and I'm proud of our DA municipalities, and I'm proud of every DA activist in this hall tonight who's made that possible. Undisputably, the success is that there's a big difference between the DA and the ANC. So don't let people come and tell you that, oh, all politicians are the same. All political parties, all political parties are not the same. That's not the truth. And the people who say that, they are the same. Because the difference between the DA and the ANC is the difference between the difference between day and night. And this is the truth. Because wherever the DA governs, we uproot corruption, we create jobs, and we give people fair access to jobs without quotas or cadre deployment. We choose the best people for the job to serve the people of the Western Cape. Now, let me tell you, the ANC is very, very very different. The ANC are the most dishonest manipulators in the history of our democracy. They are the most dishonest manipulators in the history of our democracy. For 30 years, the ANC have scammed the people of South Africa with promises that they knew they could never keep. They manipulate us with a promise. Remember, jobs, jobs, jobs. Remember that poster? They manipulated us with that. But in reality, unemployment is now the highest it has ever been. Now, over the weekend, one of the thousands of 
unemployed graduates who did what they needed to do and put themselves through university and did the five years. But like so many one of the thousands of graduates, this young lady couldn't find a job. And it breaks my heart, and I'm sure it does yours, when you travel outside of the Western Cape and you see our graduates, our young people in their gowns. They sit there with their degree certificates and they're sitting at robots begging for work. Is that right in a democracy? That's not right. Now, over the weekend, one of these unemployed graduates said to the president, where can I get a job? And he told her, she told him that she'd been looking for work. And you know what he told her? Keep looking. He said to this young lady to keep looking for a job that he know doesn't exist because his government had destroyed the job that she should have had. Now afterwards she said that she felt crushed, crushed by the president's callous attitude of telling her to keep looking and then just dismissing her. She is unemployed because the president has a job. And if we want to get her work, we've got to make the president unemployed on the 29th of May. But this ANC also manipulates us. They manipulate our young people with the promise of free education. But all the while, Blade and Zamandi's Nisfus and those fat cats are eating the students' money. And you know what? Right now, the same government is busy manipulating us about load shedding. The ANC knows that they're going to lose the election in 41 days' time. They're going to lose it. Do you agree? Do you agree they're going to lose the election? So now, now they're trying some magic tricks. They're trying to pretend and manipulate all of us that load shedding had, has ended. Magically, overnight, load shedding has ended. But at the same time, we know they're manipulating us. You know why? Because we've seen the plans where they want to take us all the way to stage 16 load shedding. That's what the ANC has planned for South Africa after the election. Load shedding's not gone. Load shedding hasn't magically disappeared. The ANC are burning tons of diesel and using every trick in the book. But let me tell you this, on the 30th, on the 30th of May, Load shedding is going to come back with a vengeance. You see, all they care about, all they care about is manipulating you and I for their own selfish ends. For the past five years, Sir Ramaphosa has been manipulating us with his empty promises that he's going to fight state capture and he's going to end corruption. But he's the one who chaired the Cater Deployment Committee during state capture. It was him. He's the one who wants to send 90 of the state capture accused back to Parliament with them after the election. He is the biggest and most dishonest manipulator of them all. He made us believe in the new dawn. But you and I both know that that new dawn disappeared like the morning mist and all that's been left is suffering, poverty, misery and hunger. Just like everybody else in the ANC, he had a lich. He had a lich for us people. He was a lich back. But you know, just yesterday, the DA has revealed how Ramaphosa manipulated the criminal justice system to keep Jacob Zuma out of jail. He did everything in the book to manipulate the criminal justice system. And you know what he did? To create cover, he wanted to create cover 
for the release of Zuma, he released 16,000 criminals onto the streets of South Africa. And let me listen to this, listen to this. This included 4,000 thieves. 4,000 thieves. That's not the thieves in Parliament that sit on the ANC benches. That's the ones that were already in jail. We're going to send the ANC ones to jail after the election when we win. But that's 4,000. 4,000. Over 2,500 housebreakers. 400 robbers. 20 arsonists. 17 kidnappers that kidnap our children. 17 of them released and six domestic abusers and rapists. So the next time the ANC comes and tells you that they're fighting crime and fighting gender-based violence, remember this. It was the same ANC that put those rapists back on the street just to protect Jacob Zuma. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Because we also revealed yesterday that over 400 of those 16,000 that were released to cover Mr. Zuma out have recommitted crimes against our people already. Already. The blood of those victims is on the president's hands. And the next time he tells you he's fighting crime, I want you to tell him, skurt, skurt. And you know what? If it was me, or if it was you, or if it was anybody who really cared about our country and cared about our people, you would have said one magic word, sorry. But you know what the president said? He said, I have no regrets. I have no regrets because he never cared about the people of South Africa. He only cared about manipulating the system to protect Jacob Zuma. That's what he did. Manipulated the system to protect one man. And then we had Becky Tele. Hey, on Viet van Dio here in any province. He was here in he was here in Hanover Park, here in Nabek. Yo, Dio. And he told our people they must stop asking for more police resources. They must stop asking. Can you imagine stopping to ask, stop asking the police minister for more policemen and women on the streets? This is when his own anti gang unit doesn't even have radios to talk to each other. How do you combat criminals and gangsters and drug dealers when you don't even have radios in your anti-gang unit? But this is the same Becky Tlele who admitted that 2.5 million serious crimes over the past three years remain unresolved. This is the same Becky Tlele who told our mothers and grandmothers and our sisters and our daughters that in South Africa, they were lucky only to be raped once. That's what he says. He must liever sy werk gaan doen om die 2.5 miljoen kriminele arresteer as om nonsens te begin praat hier in die Westkap. Want die Westkap, ons praat nie nonsens nie, ons praat die waarheid altyd in die Westkap. But he is right about one thing. He is right about one thing. We're not going to be asking for police resources anymore. We are going to do it. We're going to do it ourselves. And I'm making a commitment, Premier, that after the 29th of May, when the DA is part of a national government, we're going to give you the real power to take the criminals on. whether the ANC likes it or not. But Democrats, sometimes there is poetic justice in politics. I think you'll say here in the Westkap, slim van altijd say baas. Because the same ANC that was so scared of Jacob Zuma that it put 16,000 criminals back on the streets to attack our citizens, is now being decimated by Zuma's new party. 
The manipulative Ramaphosa thought that if you just feed the crocodile, it'll never get too hungry. But a crocodile is never full. And die self the crocodile, no, fret the eye in sir. And I say in this election, let us all pray on the carcass of the ANC until there's nothing left of that criminal carcass to inflict pain on our people. Now the collapse of the ANC in all of the credible polls shows me very clearly that the people are tired of being manipulated. Are you tired of being manipulated? Ik is sick tot my achtertanne van die ANC. The people of South Africa know that the time for change is now here. And they know that at the heart of that change, the change that will rescue South Africa is the Democratic Alliance. Because while the ANC manipulates you, the DA delivers on our pledges wherever we govern. And that is why I'm saying to you today, we're going to bring the abuse of South Africa to an end. The abuse of this country and our citizens by a government that doesn't care, we are bringing it to an end and it starts today and it's going to end on the 29th of May when we get rid of this government and bring in a new government. But to show you as well that we are a party of our word, we don't just kaluma, 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 we take action, action, action. I can announce that today we're going to lay a complaint with the public protector against Sir Ramaphosa for his latest manipulation scheme. At an ANC campaign event on Saturday, he promised the crowd there 500,000 skills training and job opportunities, not using the ANC money, using taxpayers' money. And this comes after the ANC Gauteng have already manipulated the people there with their Nasi Spani job manipulation plan, promising hundreds of thousands of jobs, but it just ends up being cadres being deployed into positions. They're just the latest scheme to try and manipulate voters into thinking they're going to do something about unemployment. But I can tell you, the day after the election, just like the 100,000 houses that were promised in Alexandra Township in the last election, those jobs will disappear. And when they go and say, but Mr. Mr. Premier and Mr. President, where's the jobs that you promised us? They're going to say, what jobs? We never promised jobs because that's what they've been doing since 1994. Empty promises, empty undertakings, and they have manipulated us. But we're saying in this election, we are not going to be manipulated anymore. Are you with me? In many of the folk people, the ANC has read the following manipulation of the plan. The ANC's next big manipulation is this. If you vote for the ANC, they are planning to sell you out to the EFF. They've realized that they're not going to get a majority, so they're now planning to sell their voters out to the EFF and a doomsday coalition that will plunge South Africa into chaos. But you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me. Because just a few days ago, Julius Malema himself confirmed this. He's told us that the plan is for the ANC and EFF to come together and they're going to make Floyd Shavambu the finance minister in this country. Now, if we allow them to pull this latest manipulation off, you're going to have as a finance minister the very same man who ripped off the VBS bank and stole our pensioners' savings and left the people in Limpopo poor. Do you want him as a finance minister? Absolutely not. 
And believe you me, as sure as night follows day, EFF policies implemented as part of a national government, your property will be expropriated. Your pension will be looted. Your savings will evaporate and inflation will plunge you into starvation. And that is the reality. So make no mistake, a vote for the ANC in this election is a vote for the chaos and the violence of the EFF. So my message to you and to all of those watching at home tonight is simple. If you're tired of being manipulated, and if you don't want your vote to be sold out to the violent EFF, then it's time to vote for the Democratic Alliance. There's only one party in the country with a sustained track record of good, clean, accountable governance that spends money on the people and not on the politicians, and that party is the DA. There's only one party that keeps its word and does what it says it will, that sticks to the rules and treats everybody fairly, and that party is the Democratic Alliance. Now, we all know, we all know, because we know from past manipulation that the ANC will never abolish cadre deployment, but the DA will. We know that Ramaphosa will never lock up the corrupt VBS looters and state capturers, but I will. We all know that the ANC will never confront the criminals on our streets, but I know that we will. We will. It's because we've got a proven track record of getting things done. And so, I undertake to you this evening that if we're able to get into national government after the election, I've got a message for the mother at home who's sitting there tonight watching, but also thinking, I don't know what I'm going to feed my children tonight. If you're watching at home and you're a father and a husband who's not had the dignity of work for two years to supply and feed your family. If you're a state hospital patient outside of the Western Cape, wondering if the state system is ever going to make you better, I've got good news for you, because help is on the way. Help is on the way because the DA is on the way. And if we get into government, we're going to end load shedding and water shedding. We're going to halve the rate of violent crime, gender-based violence and rape. We're going to crush corruption by abolishing cadre deployment. We're going to lift six million of our fellow citizens out of poverty and into work and opportunity. We're going to triple the number of grade four learners who can read for meaning. And we're going to make sure that everybody, regardless of their income, has access to decent health care. And we can do all these things. You know why? I think we should give those things a clap. That's our manifesto. That's our promise. That's our undertaking to South Africa. And I know this. We can do it because we've got the policies. We can do this because we've got the plans. But most importantly, we can do it because we've got the people. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to ask them to come and join me on the stage here. I want to show you the team that is going to come here and rescue South Africa. So I'm calling up our candidates. I'm calling up our Western Cape provincial leadership. I'm calling up the PECs to come up here to stand with me that you can see.
just die wen spun, but just die blow spun. And in this election, we are sending a message that we are going to work together because we're all tired of the manipulators in the ANC. Our time, our time has come to liberate our country from the corrupt and to make history by voting the ANC out. In this election, in this election, victory is so close. We're there. We're right there. So I want to make it clear that in this election, a vote for the DA is win, win, win. And a vote for the DA is a vote to rescue our country that we all love before it's too late. We can do it. We must do it. And together, we will do it. Democrats, please join me now in ending off with our beautiful national anthem. This beautiful anthem is our rallying cry for Democrats around the country as we march towards the 29th of May with a clear message to our people that South Africa, help is on the way, the DA is here, and together we can rescue South Africa. Let's keep it going, let's keep it going, let's keep it going, let's keep it going! Ladies and gentlemen, dames and heren, net zodat we daar staan. Als je nou nog eens staan, dan weet ik niet wat zoek je hier niet. Sta nou, sta nou. Met the same energy, oh, ik moet van jullie vragen om te gaan. And, and please, Ellen, uh, um, uh, Bongi, uh, uh, Alma, Vanilla, I love you all. As if I'm my. DA leader.
John Stienese. What qualifies the DA to run the country? Firstly, we do not tolerate corruption. And where the DA governs, life is better. And that is why millions of South Africans are moving to DA governments. We still have much more to do. But in the past year, the Western Cape created over 300,000 new jobs and is working every day to become load shedding free. We can bring this DA difference to the rest of South Africa, but only if you vote for the DA. What an amazing rescue tour that was. Uh, another one in the book. I have to say that uh, whether it came to our Rescue South Africa anthem that ignited the crowd or our speeches from the likes of our federal leader, John Steenhuizen, Jordan L. Lewis, or Alan Windy, it is absolutely exciting to be here and the energy is absolutely electric. So I don't want you to go anywhere yet South Africa because we will be having various interviews with Jordan Hill Lewis as well as a young councillor in the city of Cape Town, Tammy Jackson in the coming minutes and there is the man himself, uh, the mayor of the best run metro inside South Africa, Jordan Hill Lewis. Jordan, how does it feel? Great to see you. Electric speech. I, I'm honestly inspired. How does it feel to be here today for for the rescue tour. What an amazing, inspiring, actually quite moving event. Such an awesome, awesome coming together of DA activists from across the city, across the province actually, uh, to send a clear message. This province works. This province works and we can take this model from the Western Cape to the whole country. So it's been wonderful and very inspiring to be here. Now, when you ran for mayor, you said you wanted to build a city of hope. Yes. Why a city of hope? Well, I just, what makes me sad is that so many South Africans have lost hope about the future of our country. They think that the failure that we've had for the last uh, 20 years or so is going to be permanent. That's our future. There's nothing else for us. And I'm saying to you, there is so much more for us. And we want to demonstrate that in Cape Town. We want to show that despite our difficulties, yes, we have poverty. Yes, we have crime, but we can make progress in the right direction. We don't have to accept those things. And that's what we want to show in Cape Town. That's what we mean by a city of hope. Sure. Now, Cape Town was recently announced as the best run metro inside South Africa. What are you doing differently here? Well, we got the DA, firstly. That's the most important thing. The DA knows how to govern. We know how to do the basics right so that the people get the best out of their government. We know how to spend money without corruption. No cadres, no cronies. Do the right things. Serve the people. And everything else gets better after that. Jobs come. Investment comes. Crime goes down. So it starts with voting DA, and that's the most important message. Sure. Now, Jordan, we've seen a lot of new political players enter the space uh, in the run-up to this election. Why is it so important for people to unite behind the Democratic Alliance? Well, when you have the only province in South Africa that works, and a city that is the best-run city in South Africa, and then instead of tackling all of the ANC failure around the country, they come and try to tackle the one place that works. It doesn't make sense to me. It's just illogical. Of course, in a democracy, they have the right to do what they want. You, can, you have the right to be silly in a democracy. But voters must not be fooled by that. It's really important that we take the model from here and we take it nationally. And for that to happen, we've got to unite behind the DA. Now, Jordan, I, I follow you on TikTok. I follow you on your WhatsApp channel, on Instagram. You seem to constantly be on the ground with the people. What gets you up every morning and, and says, let me continue to serve? Well, I love people. Uh, I mean, th that's what this job is really about. It's about people. And there's nothing more fun in my day than meeting Cape Townians, hearing what they're going through, hearing what's working and what's not working, where we've got to improve. I love that. That's what gives me energy and passion. So I don't like, uh, you know, when, we, when you find me and I'm a bit down, it's usually because I've spent too much time in the office. I want to get out there. I want to meet people. I want to see what's going on. Okay. What would your final message be for the people of South Africa watching at home? The way that the Western Cape works, the way that we are creating jobs, making people safer, the way that we are, <laughs> the way that we are tackling load shedding, we can do that across South Africa. 
but it has to start with uniting behind the DA on the 29th of May. Vote DA. Thank you so much, Jordan. It's really great to see you. I'm sorry about what the Blue Bulls did to the Stormers a few weeks ago. Hey, hey, hey. hey. We're going to make up for that. Don't you worry. Don't. You, you, it was going so well until that point. Now you've, We're going to get you back. <laughs> no, perfect. Now I'm joined by a young councillor here in the city of Cape Town that's shaking up the political space, councillor Tammy Jackson. Tammy, how are you today? I'm good, Quena. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's amazing to be in Cape Town. Tell me, Tammy, how does it feel to be here for this rescue tour? Quena, it feels absolutely amazing to be here. The vibe is super electric. It's optimistic. And I think it's just generally a good show of force from the DA and its supporters here in Cape Town. I also think it's quite significant that we find ourselves in this building here today. This is the City Hall in Cape Town and this is the same place where Nelson Mandela gave his first public speech in to the members of the public right after he was released from Robin Island. So the City Hall is actually a symbol of hope and prosperity uh, and freedom in our country. And I think it's no coincidence that the DA is hosting its rescue essay tour here today because I think even though we've had 30 years of freedom and democracy under the ANC for the last few years, I think that they have collapsed the country and they have looted South Africa into the ground. And we as DA supporters are ready to see a new government take the reins after the 29th of May this year. Now, Tammy, I follow you on social media. I, I have to ask you, would you rather vote uh, for the PA or sing in Chinese? Is that even a question? I think I'd rather sing in Chinese, quite frankly. Um, even though it may actually take about 10 years to learn Chinese, I'd rather learn that than vote for a party who poses as an ally to South Africans while in reality make backroom deals with the ANC to help keep them in power in various municipalities across the country. And you know what, Gwena? I'm so happy that you actually mentioned the Patriotic Alliance because we see great and do his town hall meetings especially in the Western Cape but people need to know the reality of the Patriotic Alliance and how it was essentially founded and came into existence the Zondo Commission confirms that the Patriotic Alliance was in fact created by the ANC under President Jacob Zuma at the time to destabilize the Western Cape and usher the ANC back into power. In 2009, when the governing party lost the government here in the Western Cape, they struggled time and time again to get their hands back into the purse strings of this province. So the ANC has gotten smarter over the years and they started creating all these little popcorn small parties as uh, to act as proxies for them essentially. And the PA has shown to be the biggest proxy for the ANC at this point. So if you ask me if I'd rather vote for the PA or sing in Chinese, of course I'd sing in Chinese. <laughs> I look forward to hearing you do that. Now, and it's very clear, we have to keep the PANC out of the Western Cape. You're very active on social media and you're often advocating for young people to participate inside this election and vote. Now, what would your message be to young South Africans at home? That you may not be interested in politics, but politics is definitely interested in you. And we see this manifesting itself in the way that you live your life on a daily basis, whether it is that you are trying to gain funding through NASFAS for tertiary education, whether you're trying to gain access to your local clinic to get healthcare services, whether you're trying to pick out a choice of book at your local library, politics affects every aspect of your life. And if you do not take an active decision to go out on election day and vote for a party that is going to bring hope and prosperity to South Africa, Africa, then you are essentially handing over the power of government decision making into the hands of people who simply do not care about you as a young person or your future. Thank you so much, Tammy Jackson, and 
thank you so much to our viewers at home that tuned in. What a successful rescue tour and we will be continuing going across the country. You must follow our social media channels to find out where we will be next. But we are on a mission to rescue South Africa and we can do it. The polls show that the ANC are tipping below 50% for the first time in history. We can rescue South Africa, but we need you to vote for a government that will work for you. So thank you very much for signing in and watching this broadcast. My name is Quena Maloto. Don't lose the faith, South Africa. We are the ones we've been waiting for. In 2006, the Democratic Alliance won Cape Town by just one seat. With just 42 votes, he recently won Ngi. Because people voted for change. DA Ran Mudfall is now the best run municipality in Gauteng. And a new story was written for the Western Cape when people voted DA. But if you want a new government that works, then you have to vote for it. In this election, every single vote will count. Your vote can rescue South Africa. Vote DA. Thanks for watching. All across our beautiful country, people are joining forces to elect the new government that can rescue South Africa. Like and follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. Please share our videos with friends and family. Let's rescue South Africa. Vote DA.